Beautiful. Hello, I'm Jenna. Can you guys hear me okay back there? So we're at a really crucial and important vortex of time in this month of Elo, one of my favorite months for yoga because the hush, the sense is asiya, which is action. And there's no better way to, to flow through Elo than yoga. And the Torah calls this month the Akhris Shana, the end of the year. And it's interesting. I think a lot about endings and how often when we begin something, we have a lot of enthusiasm and vigor and excitement, like a new relationship full of passion or a new project we have with so much excitement and motivation. But Elo is a time of conscious completions. It's a time to finish all the way through. And there's a story by Reb Label, who grew up in a religious home, not Hasidic, and he decided to go study with a Rebbe, and so he left his family, and there was a lot of turmoil, and it caused a lot of intensity in his home, like, how could you do this? How could you go study with a Hasid? And he came, he left for seven years, and he came back, and his father asked him, was it worth all the turmoil you created? Was it worth studying with this Rebbe? And what did you learn? And he said, if I could sum up everything that I learned in three things, the number, the first thing is that there are man and woman and angels. The second thing is if we so wish and desire, we can ascend higher than the angels. And the third thing is Barishas Bara Elohim, means that Hashem, the creator, creates beginnings, but it's up to us, man and woman, to create endings. And that's where we are right now in the calendar. We're meant to stay present as we encounter endings in our life. And the way Rob Pinson says about this month is there's an, there's an art and sensitivity to how we open the door to someone's home. And also that same sensitivity and skill of leaving, closing the door behind us, rolling up our yoga mat and, and really ending the year with that consciousness. So this event is called the LL Exhale. And I like to see this cosmic time as a breath cycle. So Elul is a time where we are firstly inhaling the entire year. Meaning, what does it mean to inhale? It means to receive and take in all the experiences from the year, everything that we've learned and acquired, even the hard stuff, we have to bring it in and take accountability and show up for those places, really reflect on the year. And that's the inhale. It's, it's bringing it in. And tshuva means returning. So it's a sense of coming inwards. And then the exhale is open, endless opportunity. It's exhaling our energies into the open field of the future. You might have heard the, the analogy of Elo that the king is in the field. So we're really exhaling our energies into this open slate in front of us, this field that is completely limitless and completely infinite in possibilities. So let's begin with just deepening the breath. And I think the music stopped because I'm far, so I'm going to bring it over here. Um, let's see if it works. One minute. Um, one sec. It was working like BT speaker, right? Let's see. Okay, it says connected now. Yes. Does that work? All right, so let's take a deep inhale and really feel that we are collecting all the experiences of the year and showing up, witnessing this year fully. And with the exhale, we release, we let go, and we create new energies, new possibilities. And we'll bring in some movement with it. So on the inhale, we'll collect everything from the year, 
bring it in like you're embracing the world. Navel back to the spine. And exhale. Inhale to wrap, embrace the world. Rock to the back of your sit bones. And keep going with that cat and cow spine. Like you're giving your year a big hug. Beautiful. And we'll come on to all fours. So this analogy that the king is in the field means the divine presence is more available, is animating the earth beneath us. So let's just visualize our mat as an open field, an open slate of possibility. And then we'll start to roll around in your all fours, any movement that feels good. So once you feel the mat animated by the divine presence, that Hashem is in the fields, we also want to wrap that embrace around that, fe feeling and sensing a godly energy around the body. Keep breathing. I'll move this over here. So the king in the field means that the divine presence is beneath us, all around us, and also fueling our breath and movement. So let's take some cat and cows, inhaling forward, taking in the breath through the nostrils. Exhale, rolling, rounding the spine, pressing the palms into the earth. Inhale, drop the belly, gaze forward, Pelvis tilts up and exhale, curve and round. Keep going at your own pace, feeling this divine energy that's fueling your breath and movements. we'll come into a full side body stretch. So the left wrist, knee, and right heel all in one line, and really open up like you're becoming a field. And what is a field? It's a place of expansiveness, of openness, of aliveness, wakefulness, possibilities. Press into the outer edge of the foot. Reaching through the right fingertips, breathing open your fields, and we'll pull in the energy into the center as you bend the right knee, sweep it up and over, inhaling and exhale to pull. Keep circling with the breath. Let's lift on up onto that left knee and just take a side bend to the right. So floating the hand down the right shin, lifting up and over, finding spaciousness through the left side body and planting the foot into the fields beneath you. Deepen into the posture. And then release, cartwheel your arms forward, back to all, all fours. Just take a few circles here. And everything I say tonight is just suggestions. So I really want you to tune into your own body and follow the needs of 
yourself today. If you want to come into child's pose or lay down at any point, you're welcome to. Let's come to the other side. So right wrist, right knee, and left heel plant down. Sweep the left arm up and over in open fields. And the tribe of the month of Elul is God. And they were known as a Marchiv, an expanding tribe, because they expanded the boundaries of Israel. So we take on that quality of expansion and we expand the Kedusha in our life. So anything that we've collected this year, any holy moments, we spill and expand into the rest of our life. So let's take some circles here, pull it in, and lift the left hand up and over. Pull the left hand in as you bend the back knee and sweep up the hand. Follow your breath. Plant through that right knee and lift yourself up, side bend to the right, or right side body to the left, fingertips up and over, slide the hand over the left shin, finding new avenues of openness and softness here. Cartwheel the arms forward. And we'll come by sitting on the heels, just so the toes are really planted in the ground. Yeah. So Elul is an acronym for Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li, which is I am to my beloved and my beloved is to me. It's a romantic metaphor between us and our beloved, our creator. You can always come down onto your heels if you'd like. So the Hasidic masters teach us that Ani Dodi, the Dodi Li, correspond to two spiritual movements. There's the Or Yashar, which is a direct flowing light that's downwards, like the month of Nisan. And there's a reflected returning light, which is from the ground up. Ani Dodi is an arousal from below. The Dodi Li is an initiation and arousal from above. So we're in this time of like the mist rising, like a plant sprouting from the soil, lifting up to the sun. It's a complete upward flow. So we'll start to feel that in the body as we connect to the earth and let that rise. And we are initiating the divine relationship. We're renewing ourself and in our in uh, this co-creative dance that we have with the divine. And it comes from our prayers, from our intentions, and from our tshuva, our soul-searching work in this time. So let's come into a seed pose. We're bringing the knees together, sitting on the heels, and getting as small as you can, forehead pressed into the mat, resembling the Hebrew letter of this month, the Yud. Hmm. Connecting to the earth below you. And just like a seed has to totally disintegrate, totally fall apart and release in order to transform and start anew, we return back to the earth and we let go of everything from the year only to be one with the field. So the Yud is the spark of our pure potential. The Yud is the Nakudas Tov, the inner goodness that is always there no matter, it's never blemished, no matter what happened this year. It's the open slate before the traumas, before the buildups, before the fear. And the Chuva is returning to this Yud, this spark within you. So let your breath nourish the Yud Nourish the inner you. What? 
And the yud is both our origin and our full potential. So just every Hebrew letter starts pen to paper. It's just that tiny speck, that tiny dot, the ink that expands into the Hebrew letters. It's the point before the articulation. So from here, we'll expand by, lift, by um, lifting the arms in front of you, opening the knees until, into a full child's pose. You can really widen the knees, sink back on the hips, forehead pressed down. And the inner yod is also connected to our childlike essence, that place of play, returning to wonder. Like I said, the hush of this month is tikkun, which is action. It's asiya, the physical actions. And if you take tikkun and you permutate those letters, you get tinok, which is child. So we're returning to that child self. Let's take one deep breath here, nourishing the yod, the inner child, the spark of purity within. And we'll sweep the palms up as we lift onto the heels over the legs, press the palms behind us so the fingertips are facing the body. And again, that upward flow, it's our initiation and we lift to the divine. So we'll lift the hips and let anything float off the heart. Maybe it's a word, a prayer, an intention, a feeling. You can also just stay on your hips and press your heart up, whatever feels good. And exhale, sweep the hands down, forehead presses into the earth. Inhale, we'll slide up, lift the hips, send up a prayer. And on the exhale, hips to heels, sweep the arms forward. Go at your own pace for three more breaths. What are you offering up? What are you initiating? And we'll rock forward to all fours. And then lift the hips up and back as you sink the heels down. Connecting to the element of earth, which is this month. Not just because we have a sailor in the room, but it's the element of the earth. So feel the palms and feet pressing down. Standing on Eretz Yisrael, the land of milk and honey. And if you take that phrase, Eretz, um, the land of milk and honey, you get Echad, the first letter, which means oneness. So we're standing on that oneness below us, that fluid milk and honey, receiving it through the palms and through the feet. And gaze forward, step or jump or flow to the top of your mat, fold forward. Sink the heels down, releasing the spine from hips to crown. And with the feet planted, we'll inhale, rolling all the way up, really feeling that upward flowing movement of Anila Dodi as the palms lift above us. And exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, sweep the hands up, look up. Exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale, flat back, hands to shins or tops of thighs. Roll the shoulders away from the ears and hug the elbow tips towards each other. Breathe in through the nose and exhale, fold. Press the palms down, step back into a plank or you can always bring your knees down. So in the body, the earth element means settling the skeleton down. So all the knuckles of the hands, press them down. And then let's lower all the way to the earth. Feel the heart press down to the abundant, alive energy of the ground beneath us. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Lifting the crown, pressing the tops of feet down. Breathe in through the nose. And exhale, lift the hips up and back. Take three unhurried, full breaths here. Receiving the aliveness of the ground into the palms and feet. And at the bottom of your exhale, look forward, step or jump to the top of your mat and fold. Exhale, release. Inhale as we roll all the way up from the feet all the way up through the fingertips. And exhale, landing or falling, arriving at the heart center. Nice. Inhale, sweep the palms high. Exhale, fold forward, bowing towards the earth. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, down, back into your plank or all fours. Extend through the heels. Activate the navel. And then lower or chaturanga into your upward facing dog. Shine through the heart. Nice. And tucking the toes, stepping back to down dog. Three deep breaths. So we'll take that vinyasa one more time and really focus and feel yourself in that upward flow, especially from forward fold up into extended mountain pose. And see if you can feel the wakefulness rising through your body and offering something up towards the supernal realms. Look forward, step to the top of your mat. Fold, deepen in towards yourself. Inhale, roll it up. Intentionally, as we lift the hands. Exhale, hands to the heart palace. Inhale, sweep them up. Exhale, rolling forward. Last one, inhale, flat back. Exhale, press the palms down, step it back to plank. Press through the knuckles, all 10 fingers, lower halfway, Scoop up the heart, shine it forward, breathe in through the nose, and exhale, step it back. <sighs> Let's take an inhale and rise through the right toes, three-legged dog, gaze forward and step the foot between the hands. Nice. You can lower the left knee down, sinking into the hips. Nice. So we'll lift the hands and we'll say together, Anila Dodi, as we lift up our prayers, our offerings. And then the exhale, the Dodi Li, towards the heart. The Dodi Li is the receiving, being in the faucet of blessings from our source. So let's try it all together. Anila Dodi, inhale. Exhale, Vidodili. 
Beautiful. Hands down. Let's take a twist to the right, turning the belly chest, reaching through the right fingertips. If you want, you can bend that knee and pull the heel towards the low back. If you're holding the toes, release the foot, circle it forward, sign the heart forward, and then tuck the toes, step it back to your dog, sinking the heels, visualizing the most beautiful green grassy fields beneath you. And other side, inhale the left leg nice and high. Reach down through the crown. Exhale, step it between the hands. Right knee lowers, top of the foot down. And we'll try it together. Inhale, Ani Ladodi. Exhale, Vidodi Li. Let's try it one more time. Inhale, Ani Ladodi. Vidodi Li. Really feel yourself receiving a new blessing from your creator right into the basket of your heart. And press the hands down. Let's take a twist to the left. Maybe reach for the back foot if that's in your reach today. Deep, radiant breaths. Nice, release the toes, circle the arm. And we'll step it back into our dog, sinking the heels, lifting through the sit bones, extending the spine nice and long, feeling that fields beneath you, animating you, and all around you, a sphere of godly energy. And then walk the heels of the hands back towards the toes. Folding forward at the back of your mat. Slight bend in the knees. And then inhale as we roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. Inhaling, sweeping the palms high, offering up a prayer. Exhale, hands to the heart. So we'll come into a side bend. L is a perfect time for side bends because all year we are stuck in our linear patterns and it's a time to break free of stagnation and form new avenues. So we'll take a hold of the right wrist and we'll lift it up and over and swing the right toes behind the heel. You can make a crescent moon with the left hand, a nice circle here, or just pull on the wrist. Every exhale, release a habit, a stagnation, anything stuck or holding you back from just openness. And swing it back around. Hands to the heart, coming to the other side. Hold on to the left wrist, pull it up and over. Swing the left toes around, sphere through the arms, nice and luminous. The soft, like moon like energy. Nice. And come to the top of your mat. Inhale, lifting the gaze. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, palms down. You can chaturanga or we'll meet you in down dog, however, you want to get there. Child's pose is always available to you, or seed pose, yud pose. Take a deep breath here to arrive in this earth spot. The Sphirah of Elul is also Malchus, which is connected to the kingdom of life, the earth beneath us. It's also the feet, the heaviness of the hips, the womb. So feel yourself settling down towards the earth. 
And we'll take an inhale, sweeping the right toes high. Gaze forward, step the right foot through. And press the left heel down, setting up for a warrior one. Nice. So sink through the hips. Feel that earth quality just settling. And again, L is a time where we collect the experiences. Finding the Yud in our world, in our year, means collecting all the wisdom. So as if we're collecting everything from the year, from the earth, pulling it up through the heart, and then lifting through the fingertips. Flip the palms and exhale it down. So we'll try that a few times. Inhale, collecting the wisdom, the lessons of the year, pulling it up through the heart, offering it up, elevating those experiences. Flip the palm, exhale. You can always straighten your leg and do this too. Take one more. Let it glide, soar upwards. Ah, let's interlace the hands, fold forward into a humble warrior, letting the pinky fingers reach back towards the top of the mat. The yud is the smallest Hebrew letter, yet it contains all the potential. It, it contains all of the future articulations of all the Hebrew letters. So Humble Warrior brings us back to that small place of humility where everything's possible. Nice. It looks like we're releasing, so let's release up and bring the feet into a Warrior Two stance. We'll keep the legs straightened for now. And stepping into the new year is like being a spiritual warrior. We have to have our eyes on our higher self. We have to cut through darkness and resistance. So we'll bring the hands to the shoulder tips and literally like you're slicing through the hurdles, through the darkness, release it out, flip the palms, inhale to lift. So we'll try that a few times. Cross the shoulders, exhale, and inhale. Go at your own pace. Cutting through any resistance that you have right now intentionally with piercing focus, being that spiritual warrior. And the tribe of God this month, what were mighty warriors. So we're, we're embodying those qualities. What are we fighting towards? What are we walking towards? Last one. Nice. And warrior two, let's sink deep through the hips, flip the right palm, sweep the hand up and over. Graceful warrior. Ah, sometimes we have to fight, sometimes we have to surrender and find softness. Let's open up to star pose by bringing the heels towards each other. Just shining our light in all directions. The front of the heart, the back of the heart. Maybe sparks of light off the fingertips and toes. Really being warriors of light and committing to walking through the world this year with more light and more radiance and showing up more fully. And then circle, cartwheel the arms forward. You can take a chaturanga or a meet and down dog. Notice any shifts in your energetic field, in the subtle body. And we'll take an inhale as we sweep the left leg nice and high. 
pressing into the palms, gaze forward and step it through. Press the right edge of the foot down, coming up to a warrior one. Imagine your fingertips are growing downwards towards the earth, finding the Nakuda's tove, the spark of goodness, even in the hard things this year. So even in the dark places, we collect it, we find the spark, we raise it up through the heart and to our creator. We'll flip the palms, exhale. A few times like that. Last one, and we'll take the aliveness of the earth below, pull it up, and like a basket of prayers, we lift it up, and exhale. Interlace the hands, coming into humble warrior on the other side. First, shining the heart forward, squeezing shoulder blades together, folding towards that inner left shin, pressing into the outer edge of the foot, coming back to smallness, which will allow us to receive greatness and perceive the grandeur of Hashem and all of the creations. The intricate details and the amazement of our body comes from that humility. Let's inhale, lifting up, warrior two on the other side. Flip the palms to the sky, straighten the leg, and sweep them up. Or you can keep the leg bent the whole time if you're feeling strong today. Hug your chest like you're holding yourself with a lot of care, with a lot of tenderness, and showing up fully for yourself, cutting through resistance for your self-love. So exhaling, bending deep, flipping the palm, and inhale it up. Let the hands fall to the shoulders, <sighs> slicing through, flip it up, palms together, nice. <sighs> Let's do two more. And deep and into your warrior two, flip the palm, sweep it up and over, reaching behind you. Ah. Nice, let's lift up, draw the heels towards each other, shine towards star pose, Magan David pose. And Kabbalah teaches that these are all the directions of the spherot around us, so feeling completely embraced by these spherotic energies, by divine space. Just finding permission to show up fully this year, take up more space, and let your authentic self just shine in all directions. Let's circle the arms forward. Step it back into your down dog, sinking the heels. Letting any movements that come here, maybe a soft sway in the hips or a gentle head movements micro adjustments just to feel safe, secure in your body in this place. And look forward, stop, step or jump to the top of your mat, fold in, inhale, rolling all the way up. We'll meet in mountain pose, palms open, feet pressing down, 
for the Adama. Letting yourself just be an extension of the earth energy below. And one of the names for God and it's used in Elul is Hamakom, which means the place. So this signifies that also it means omnipresent. Just being here in this place, in this earth spot, in this body, we can connect to the infinite light of God being physically present in this body. Feel the pulsation of the ground beneath you. And then bring the hands to the hips. And the Gemara talks about the ground waking up brings a seraph, which is like a sweet nectar, a, a like nourishing sweet fluid that lifts through the tree. So let's really visualize that we're waking up from the bottom, from the root to the crown. So rolling through the right toes and ankle, and then letting that lift up to the knee and to the right hip. This has a form of drawing up earth energy through the body, right side body into the shoulder, elbow, and like your fingers have flickering candles, just complete sweetness rising up. And even the gaze may lift. Nice. And keep that left sole of foot planted, pop the right knee out and open. You can kickstand here or slide the sole of the foot up below the knee or above the knee or into your inner groin. And feel that suction between the inner leg and sole of foot. Visualize roots growing from the bottom of your foot, anchoring you to this spot beneath you. And our L tree is, of course, looking up, hands up. Definitely a balanced tester. But we're taking that sweet seraph, the nectar, and we're lifting it up in our basket of prayers. And you can find movement here. You can make some tree angels. We know that. Um, Kabbalah teaches every emotion that we have, we create an angel. Every thought we have creates an angel. So we're either creating tribes of angels supporting us in positive directions or a tribe of hasfashalom, negative angels. So it's a time right now to rectify our emotions, our thoughts, and try to create sweet, positive angels that just help us on our journey. Beautiful. And we'll take the right ankle. If you want more of a challenge, you can bring the ankle over the left knee, hands to the heart, sink and descend the outer edges of the hips, pressing the forearms on the shelf you've created beneath you. Palms are pressing towards each other. Soften the gaze towards the earth. Nice. And inhale as we step into extended mountain pose, reaching the fingers high, lifting the heart. What's floating upwards? What are you offering to the divine? Ah, exhale, hands to the hips. Let's roll out that left side body. So starting with the toes and the, and the ankle. Wakefulness rising through the left leg, up into the knee, through the thigh and the hip. I'm so glad we're all women tonight. I did this last night when there were like a few men in the back and I was just like, hi. <laughs> Rolling the shoulder. And that metaphor of a plant bursting out of the soil and like lifting up towards the sunlight, that's what we're creating right now. And then plant through the sole of the right foot, pop the knee out to the side. Stay right here if you just want a peaceful tree, 
planting this, the ball of the foot into the earth. If you want to challenge your balance, you can lift above the knee or below the knee. And it's up to you. You can have an L tree, just like you're really intense about it, straight up to Hashem, or you can do some tree angels. I think connecting to our roots in this time of Elul, connecting to the earth and our roots, really comes back all the way to Eve, to Chava. We're connecting to our matriarchs, the mothers, the woman that came before us, and our, our roots, our, our rituals, and what keeps us nourished from the ground. So, so happy to be with Eve tonight. And Chava, which means life, and that's what we're creating complete life from the ground up. Stay with your tree or bring that heel over the knee, palms together. You can press the thumbs into the sternum, fold into your shelf, descending through the hips, pressing into the right foot and opening the sole of the left foot. Soften the temples, release the jaw. Deepen your breath wherever you're holding right now. And we'll lift up, sweep the hands. And let's keep the left arm lifted. Does anyone know the body part of Elul? Left, left arm, you're right. Um, so the left arm connects to the right brain. The right brain is our ability to imagine, to visualize, to see the big picture. That's what Elul is. It's not about the details. It's seeing who we want to be. It's, it's seeing the life in our fullest and connecting to that expanse. In, in Hashem's name, the Yud is the right brain and the He is the left brain. So this month is the Yud, which is right brain. This is a subconscious. It's also Gevura, which is an inward focus. And that is so Elul, Chuba coming within, returning to herself. It's not a time of outward energy, but rather of inward energy. So thanks for keeping your arm off that long. Let's sweep the right arm under to eagle arm. So backs of palms together or clap. Stay right here if this is intense enough for you. Opening the wings of the shoulder blades. Or you could bring the right leg up and over, kickstand the toes, or wrap them. Zip the inner thighs together, descend the hips down, and then lift through the fingertips. Try to notice your vision spliced in half, the yud on the right, the hay on the left. Sharpen the gaze. Let the breath inform you of this present moment. Stay here, or if you want to go into a warrior three, unravel the right heel. Keep the arms in eagle, and then lift through the right toes. Balance forward. Keep the gaze sharp, and the forearms pressing down towards the mat. We'll lift up like a teeter-totter, unravel the hands like an open field, and we'll switch, swinging the left arm under, backs of palms, clap together. Nice. Then the left leg will come over or wrap, sink down. I'll look this way. Lift through the fingertips. Feel the back of the heart. We spend so much time at the front of the heart, it becomes interesting and healing to bring awareness to the back of the heart, where our support, where the earth grounds us. And then release the back foot as you fold forward to warrior three. keeping our right brain open, 
to visualization, to imagery, to holy imagination, to all the possibilities. Nice, we'll lift on up, sweep the arms open, and land the fingertips at the sternum. El is also an acronym for Es Lavav Ha, the Es Lavav, which means in Shema that Hashem should open our hearts and our hearts of our offspring. So close the eyes and feel or notice any congestion, any constriction of the heart any emotional tones or blockages. You can open your eyes just to see. We'll pull the gates of the heart open, like we're clearing that congestion, clearing the cobwebs, pulling it open over the shoulder blades into a wide open field. Kind of like how we started the class with the sternum pressing forward. And then the exhale will round the spine, like cat spine, and come back. Inhaling, opening through the cobwebs. Our heart as wide as a field, or as wide and open as a sky. And let's bring the hands under the shoulder blades and just massage under the collarbones where we hold a lot of stuckness and tension. Just allow ourselves to be a witness to our emotional experience today, to what we're holding in the heart or who we're holding in our heart today, making an allowance of space for that. And if you can't feel anything here, which is totally normal, and a lot of us have that, you can also just tap from side to side to just awaken the energy here. The arousal from below in the body is the stirring of the heart. So L is the heart opening, and sometimes we just have to remind ourselves that there is life under the collarbones. So this bilateral stimulation is just like we're walking deeper and deeper to the center point of the heart, just like a staircase down. Nice. Bring the hands to the low back and rock the hips forward, squeeze the shoulders together, lift the sternum, lift the chin. And exhale, fold all the way down. Let's sink the hips into a squat. This is a very earth energy pose. I do this every earth month. So it feels really nice just sinking the hips down, feeling the soles of the feet rooting, opening through the inner knees, pressing palms together. And to keep that heart fluid going, you can press the thumbs into the sternum. And the Anila Dodi, the lifting up of our prayers, lift the fingers high. And exhale, the Dodi Li. The response is that we are being written in the book of life. We ask Hashem, we give our prayers, and then God breathes life back into us, gives us renewed life force, new energy, a new year. That's the response that comes from Rosh Hashanah. Let's wrap the left arm all the way to the side. Sweep open the right arm. This is our arm of chesed, allowing in more love and kindness and openness, fluidity into our experience this year especially if you need more of it just like yeah wave it in come in 
Chesed's also like a white, a white light. The element of water and the right arm. <sighs> Exhale back to the heart. And then hug the right shoulder and the inner knee. Press the right palm open. Sweep open the left arm, the left hand of Gavura. Finding more strength and boundaries and structure and focus and inwards energy. Bringing that into our year. Kavura is the element of fire. So some more heat and passion and just all around perseverance. Hands to the heart. Now we'll extend the right heel to the right. You can always just come onto your back if you want to chill. And we'll come lifting the hips up and to the other side. So side to side squat. I like to see the mat as really a metaphor. The front of the mat being the future, the coming year, and the back of the mat being the past year. And Elul's in this very interesting time where we're closing the year and we're also beginning the year. The end is wedged in the beginning, as you've, you've heard. So Elul's a time to find presence in those transitions. So between the front and the back. Let's add a twist in here. So as you come to the back, twist and then lift. As you come to the front, look forward, twist to the side. There's no right or wrong movements. We're just inviting in some play. The inner yod is just that childlike wonder and curiosity back in front of the mat, just exploring your space. So we're reflecting, we're going back, and we're also looking forward with hope and with optimism. Let's take one more on each side. Nice, we'll meet at the front of the mat, step back into dog. Don't worry, we're coming into pigeon. Let's take an inhale with the right leg, nice and high. Exhale, right knee to the outer right wrist. Pigeons also in earth pose, really deepening through the hips, pressing down through the palms. You can stay right here with your heart lifted, the crown ascending, it's refining our relationship with the upper realms. And exhale if you want to come forward onto your forearms or press the forehead onto the mat. You can stay for as long as you'd like. If you'd like to take a twist with me, let's bring the palms up and just wrap the left leg all around. Hug the knee into your chest. Anchor both sit bones down as you lift through the crown. And then sweep the left arm up and behind you. You can bring that elbow over the knee or you can take that palm and set it on your heart. So here in Elo, we're looking behind us, like in this twist. We're reflecting on the year, remembering where we came from, all the obstacles we've gone through, everything we're proud of from this year. We're looking back, 
we're taking it all in, we're being accountable for how we showed up or where we didn't show up fully. And we'll release, still so come onto the outer edges of the feet and we'll just take a big spiral towards the other side. <laughs> So if you didn't land, that's okay. We're on the twist. We could try it again if you want. So outer edges of the feet, you keep them down and you spiral to the other side. You can try if you want. Nice. <laughs> so we're just spin and sit. <laughs> so the right knee is lifted now. The left heel is hugging in. And sweep the arm up and over, lift the heart, and then gaze over the shoulder tip. It's also a time to look back at all the women that have come before us, that have supported us on our journey, our matriarchs, our mothers, and any woman who has been there for us this year. We look back at them with gratitude, knowing that if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here now practicing and showing up, preparing for the new year. You can bring your hand to your heart. Just say thank you, thank you. And we'll come forward, extend the heels in front of you. So we're opening the soles of the feet, pressing the feet, and the heels and the sit bones down. Inhale, sweep the hands high. Exhale, fold forward. You can bend the knees as much as you need. And let the gaze be a river flowing inwards. A chuva is returning to yourself. So all your awareness, channeling it inwards towards yourself. Then sweep the hands over the legs as you roll onto your back. Draw the knees into your chest. Feel the back of the heart plant into the earth. The king is in the field. Feel any sparks of aliveness in the back of the heart supporting you. And we're also in a yud position here, a tiny, tiny pose. And from the tiny speck of potential, all life forms, like a seed, will start to lift the ankles and the wrists, like we're growing into a plant or a wildflower, any piece of grass, just waving it in your field, waving it through the wind. There's no right or wrong movements here. Just feel your body in the field. <laughs> and Kabbalah teaches that every blade of grass has its own angel. Every sway of grass is divine providence. So we're out here like witnessing that life force through our bodies, through our breath. And you can come into any last pose here if you want. If you need a twist, if you need happy baby, whatever your body feels like it needs today. And we'll all meet in a final Shabbat pose.
So in the Shabbat pose, this place of stillness, let's bring the hands to either the womb, which is connected to Malchus, the Sphira this month, or the heart that we've been working with, that we've felt an opening. It doesn't matter where, either the heart or the low belly. In yoga, it's called the Hara. El is about opening the lower energy centers. So find your hands and breathe into your palms, either through the low belly or through the heart. Feel the pulsation of breath lifting and falling with every breath. And every day of Elo, we blow the shofar, the great exhale to prepare for Rosh Hashanah. The shofar is when new life, new energy is emerging into the world for the first time ever. So the Zohar asks, what was the original shofar? This is a piece of sound healing, a ritual of sound. What is the original shofar? And the Zohar says that when Adam was formed from the earth, from the Adama, there was soil and there was Nishima, there was breath. And the Creator blew into Adam's nostrils a breath of life. And what was this sound created through this very first intimate relationship? The sound was the shofar, the piercing cry the awakening primal noise came through Adam. That was the sound of creation. So we are the original shofars. Our body is that channel of new life, new frequency that reverberates through us. So every inhale through the nose, we're being recreated by the source of life. We're being breathed deeply into by our creator. And just like the shofar through the exhale, new energy, new life forms, reverberating sound through the body. Focusing on the breath for these last few moments. You can roll onto your side when you're ready, cradling your head pillow into the arm and lifting up to a seated. So the inhale is what we're returning to. Shuva means returning 
to the hay, returning to the breath. On the inhale, we return. We return to the yud, the spark of goodness, the inner child, the place before the open field, the slate before all the noise. And the exhale, we release and we let go, creating new energy. So I'm going to pass this stone around. This is the gem of this month. As if you came last month or last event, you would know. This is a stone of Elul. The Achlama, the root of Achlama is Halom, which means to dream, to imagine. That's the right brain that we were activating today. So I'm going to pass it around and I want you to say, two words. One, what are you returning to on the inhale? And the exhale, what are you releasing? What are you letting go of? So for an example, returning to calm, releasing, letting go, anxiety. That's mine. So I'll pass it to you. You can say it out loud if you want. You don't have to. You guys are welcome to say it out loud if you want to. You don't have to, but I think it would be nice if anyone wants to share. Beautiful. So what we're going to do now is we're going to travel upstairs. If anyone 
needs to leave, you're welcome. But what we're going to do is bring this up into a circle and continue some sharing. So follow me. <laughs> I loved your attention. When other people say it, I feel like we all relate to it. It's like, oh yeah, that is a, something I need to really know. I think if we're in a circle, more people will share. Yeah. Mm -hmm.